to thee, praise him. I need thee every hour. Teach me thy will and thy rich promises in me fulfill. I need thee, oh, I need thee, precious, how I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Can you turn in your Bibles to the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 5? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray that every thought would be captive and obedient to Jesus Christ now and that you would do such a work in us that your word would have great success this morning going forth. And I pray also, Lord, that we would sanctify the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, that we would want to speak of him, that you would give us those opportunities to do so, that there's no greater name above his than that of Jesus Christ. Amen. I used to go in the Moody Bible Institute and drive in a certain way. And I'd stop and get a cup of coffee, but there was a black wall on, on a factory, and I remember that they had what they thought in order was the greatest people who ever lived. And it bothered me because Jesus was number seven or eight. And I thought, boy, they should have put him on top. So I wanted to get on that scaffold and use some whiteout and put him above every name. Isn't he above every name? Amen. Let me, let me share this with you. Recently, I, uh, I went to look in a cabinet at our house. And as I looked in there, I saw that there was, uh, where there was allergy medication and where there was some cold medicine for the kids, and like aspirin were in there, and some antacids. As I kept looking, I didn't find what I was looking for. It wasn't there. Now let me ask you this. If you received a cure from someone else, a cure like in an aspirin form, somebody gave you that, and it was an actual cure for every disease on the earth, and again, you took that aspirin and you received it from yourself, for yourself, and you found out that it cured you, and you found out that you had been saved from perishing itself, would you just keep it to yourself? Or would you want to share it with other people? Would you get excited about it? Would you want it to share it with anyone and everyone? Because it worked for you. You knew it was the truth. And you knew that you were saved from perishing because you received it or you took it for yourselves. In Acts chapter 5, in verse 16, Jesus' ministry continued through his apostles. He was doing the, they were doing the very things that he had done. But somebody became jealous because of it. And that was the group called the, the, the Sadducees. In Acts chapter 5, verse 16, the people from the cities in the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together as, as well, bringing people who were sick or tormented with unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. But the high priest stood up along with all his associates, that is, the sect of the, Sar uh, the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. They laid hands on the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the gates of the prison, and leading them out, he said, Go stand and speak to the people in the temple area the whole message of this life. Upon hearing this, they entered in, into the temple area about daybreak and began to teach. 
Now, when the high priest and his associates came, they called the council together, that is, all the senate of the sons of Israel, and sent orders to the prison for them to be brought. But the officers who came did not find them in the prison. And they returned and reported, saying, We found the prison locked quite securely, and the guards standing at the doors, But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them as to what would come of this. But someone came and and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple area and teaching the people teaching the people. You see these, this group, this religious group called the Sadducees. They were a group at the time who falsely believed that there was no resurrection from the dead. But here, on the other hand, the apostles are boldly proclaiming that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And so these Sadducees became threatened by the word of life. They became threatened by it, of how not only of how the apostles spoke freely about Jesus, but also how that they lived their life according to it. That it was true, that he was risen from the dead, that he is the hope that people need. And Jesus Christ is the hope that people need also today. And the apostles were utterly unafraid. They preached the word of God in boldness. They were they were, they were God's servants and they knew it. They knew they were called to share the gospel. And, and the Sadducees, they had a high opinion of themselves, this religious group. And, and, and the Sanhedrin or the Jewish court system also had a very high opinion of themselves. And they also had something else, a smoldering opposition to the gospel of Christ. They were against it. They were enemies against it. And it wasn't just some veiled threats that they made against the apostles, but they followed through with them. And once their jealousy, like, boiled over, once it boiled over, they, like, pounced upon God's servants and they put them in prison, the followers of Jesus Christ. You know, dead religion will cost us nothing. If we do not, dead religion will cost us nothing, but it costs these disciples something what was the prison like at the time they were in prison for preaching the gospel what was what was it like you can imagine a place that had no electricity you can also imagine with them being in prison a place with no running water a place with rodents a place with the conditions of being dark damp dingy and cold and with that smell that came along with it So you could say for these servants of God that there was some hardship for them, that there was some suffering for them. And I've said it for years, I think sometimes we turn Christianity upside down. That real Christianity is wanting to do the will of God and wanting wanting to do what pleases God no matter what. And along with that might come persecution. Along with that might come some opposition. But that's the way we grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you could imagine such a place and them being in it for doing evangelism. But God would deliver them out of that place. And the apostles wouldn't stop even after they were out. They were called to preach the gospel and they would not stop. Jesus said in Luke chapter 11 verse 23, he said, the one who is not with me is against me. And the one who is, does, does not gather with me scatters. So either or. There's no sitting on the fence. There's no such thing as being neutral with Jesus Christ. The apostles couldn't stop, nor would they stop. And if you have been saved from perishing yourself, do you want to share it? The truth? To share Jesus? And not to just keep it for yourself? And, not, and, not, and just not want to tell anyone else about it? And wouldn't you get excited about it? Wouldn't you want to tell anyone about it and everyone about it? Especially when you saw some others perishing 
when you saw some others dying? When in their unbelief they were rejecting or refusing the truth? Would you stop? They didn't stop, and they couldn't stop. Would you stop trying? They didn't stop trying. Would you stop sharing the gospel of peace? Of how that Jesus Christ has conquered the, the disease of sin. How Jesus Christ has conquered death itself. How Jesus Christ gives people hope and how that He conquered hell itself also. And it's for us to tell others that there is another way. Another way that's without darkness or sin. And it's Jesus Christ, we need to tell them, is the one who liberates someone. John chapter 8, verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We need to tell others that there, there is another way other than sin and darkness. And, and there is a superlative worth of salvation. In 1991, I came to faith in Jesus Christ. And you could say that the Lord rescued me and redeem my life from the pit. And I won't stop. I won't stop telling others how He changed me. Now about the doctrine of salvation, what is it? What do people need to hear? How awesome, how awesome it is that they can be saved from, from sin and from eternal punishment because of it. We could tell someone this. You could simply tell someone this week, this week I know you can for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. You can share that with someone this week. God can take away the spirit of timidity, the spirit of fear in us. Let me encourage you this week to share Christ with three people. In three conversations you have, turn them to Him. I went to buy some flowers for the office here or some plants. And I ran into a lady in a store, a local store. And I went in there and I bought a few plants and I'm going to put one in there. And I was talking with her and I said, you know, it's awesome that you opened this store. And she told me about her past, how she was a police officer in Chicago and that she was religious until she met a saved person. And they told her of Christ. And you can share John 3.16 with someone this week. How does someone know that they're saved? Because God cannot lie. How does someone know that they're saved? Because you believed in Jesus Christ. And, and you've repented and you've turned from sin. And how does someone know they're saved? It's because you've been changed by God and you know it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5 says this, For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So the question is this for a Christian. When a trial comes your way, how will you respond? Will it be like a Christian? Or will you get upset? Will you get angry about it? When a trial comes, how will you react? Believers, it's to walk the walk at that moment. To react the right way and to re react like a Christian. And not to stop. And not to be silenced. For they weren't. I'm looking at doing my second doctorate. And this one's going to be on the philosophy, a doctor of philosophy and theology, and I won't stop. But one thing above that that I am, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, I, you know, there was times in my life you go to Cook County Maximum Security Jail, and you'd go through that big rigmarole, and you'd go through them searching you, and you'd go through this machine and that machine and an x-ray machine, and then you'd wait, and they'd open this gate, and they'd open that gate, and then they'd say you'd have to wait some more, or they'd cancel the whole service. And you say, you know, I, I'm not one of them, let me out, right? But you'd go through that to share the, to share the gospel with those people. I also went into... Um, Morrison County Jail. And there was someone who did something awful named Nick Sheely uh, out of Sterling. And I met with his brother in there behind the bars and he said, Pastor, I did a lot of awful things in my life. And I did some bad things, but I didn't help him. And so we prayed and I asked God to get him out if he was innocent. And right at that time, a butterfly on the third floor of the jail, through, through the bars and through the plexiglass, if you will, the dirty glass, came a butterfly. 
And you know that young man was released. Then I got a chance, this man who killed other people, to meet with his wife. She did something just, I think, to get some attention. You know, a cry for help. Sat in there with her and shared Christ with her. We can share John 3.16 with someone this week. Charles Ryrie said to the doctrine of salvation, how awesome that it is. It's called soteriology in theology. And it's, he said that it's one of the greatest themes that is found throughout the Scriptures, that it's both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that it's in the Bible everywhere, and that salvation, where it embraces a personal relationship with God, that it also, the salvation can be that of a country or of a nation. And in the end times, it will be a cosmic salvation of this entire world. So it incorporates the past and the future. And he also said we need to remember that the salvation that's in the Bible, that it is centered on one person, and that is on Jesus Christ. It's personal. Has he done that for you? He did that for me. And maybe just like me looking in that cabinet, not finding what I was looking for. You've been looking in your life, and you haven't found it yet. You've been looking and searching and saying, where are the answers to life? Where are the hope that I need? It's in Christ alone. So this angel, once he delivered them from prison, he gave them a new message. No, no, he didn't. He told them to say the same things they were saying already. They wouldn't stop. They couldn't stop. He told them to go preach the gospel, and they did it. And then they did it again even after they were flogged or beaten for Christ after the angel had opened the prison doors. The message was to those of the way because that's, what, because that's what Christians were called, those of the way. For followers of Jesus Christ was to teach about Jesus, simply. I like what that lady told me this week. She said, you know what we want to do? We want to just simply get people, other people, to think about Jesus. We can do that. And you know, there's been times that you, you get in a conversation and it takes a little bit of practice and you try to do it and it doesn't work. But try to steer the conversation again towards Him, towards Jesus. So they kept on preaching about Jesus. And in His service, they spoke up again and again. And they were put in public jail because of it. They wouldn't stop. They kept right on because it's forgiven sinners that are now those who God uses to reach the lost. And again, where dead religion will cost you nothing, preaching the gospel just might. Sharing Christ costs the disciples something. I found an article about the providence of God, about the caring protection of God in His creation. And I know I'm on butterflies a little bit, but I think they're so awesome. Brian Thomas, a Ph.D., wrote this about questions and answers about creation. And he asked a question about, why don't raindrops bomb butterflies' wings? It's because of God's protection, His caring protection of them. It's because the way that God created them. Or because that the butterflies' wings, you understand, have a waxy surface that makes the water or the drops of water resistant. They have like bumps on their wings to diffuse the force of the falling rain. And God created all the inner works, workings and components to creation to make it to thrive. And God has done the same thing for the church. In the Word of God, it tells us what we ought to do to help the church to thrive and not to die. And one of them is to do evangelism, to tell others of Jesus Christ. It's the way for it to thrive and for it not to die. It's by sharing the gospel with others. They were persecuted, but an amazing thing happened. God helped them. He sent an angel from heaven to help them. And it shows God's protective care over the early church. And at that moment, the apostles learned something, that there was no trouble that God could not fetch them out of. Are you facing trouble this week? There is no trouble that God cannot fetch you out of. And in proving that God can use anyone, 
to carry out his purposes in the world. There was somebody later on in the chapter named Gamaliel, and he was a Pharisee. And he spoke up, verse 34, preventing that council, that Jewish council, from executing the apostles. Now, he was no friend of Christianity. In fact, he died a Pharisee. He lived a Pharisee. And we've got to realize who this person was. God even used him. Gamaliel was the son of Simeon in Luke chapter 2, who waited his whole life for the redemption of Israel. This was the man who waited in the temple. And once he saw Jesus, he picked him up in his arms, He's, and, and, and he said, this is the Messiah. He waited for him all his life for the Deliverer to come, and here he had the Savior in his, in his arms. And what of his son? Again, Gamaliel lived and died a Pharisee. No friend of Christianity, but it shows that God can use anyone to fulfill his purposes. So when we speak to people, Bring up Jesus three times in your conversation and trust that God can even do a work in that person's life right at that moment to bring up God to you, an open door for you to share Christ. Dead religion will cost you nothing. It, it will cost you nothing. One way I've seen the church grow is through doing evangelism. And when we look at the stubbornness and rebelliousness of men, we might want to ask this thing. Why would God want to give His only unique begotten Son to die on a cross for such as them? Because He loves them. And I love them too. And I hope you do. And the church didn't stop. And the church couldn't be stopped. Acts chapter 14 talks about how they went on and they made a good number of disciples. And then they, it says in verse 22, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying it is through many tribulations that we must enter the kingdom of God. To a Puritan, Jonathan Edwards. One reason I love this church because it was founded not only on the pilgrims but on, on, the, on the Puritans. And, and Jonathan Edwards said this, but those who go down to the pit or go into hell, or without hope. And they cannot hope for God's truth. But in the first second that they're there, they realize that God's Word is true. And they realize that God is who He said He was. And the church is here now to reach the lost. And that's what they did. They obeyed God rather than man. And they wouldn't stop speaking, referring to Jesus Christ and what they had seen in Him. And they wanted others just to, to believe in Him. Let me encourage you this week to try and bring up Jesus in three different conversations. And realize that not everybody is going to want to hear His name. Because that Jewish council didn't. Evangelism. Not every, I, think everyone, I, I think everyone in the church is able to do it in some form or fashion. Plant a seed. And then I want to share this, and then I'm done. God brought me to that, into that lady's uh, life just to encourage her. She said she suffered through depression for the last year and a half. She said she, she suffered from in the pandemic. She didn't know what to do with her life. She didn't leave her house. And then she, she shared her testimony. She shared how that she met that born-again believer. And where she had dead religion, now she knows Christ. And we both encourage one another that one day we know for sure that we're going to be with Jesus. We know that. Let me ask you this question. If you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? And why would God let you into heaven? What's the reason He would let you in? And if you say it's because of Jesus and Him alone, then you have eternal life. If you're adding something else to that, then you need to come to faith in Him. Bring up Jesus in three different conversations this week. They asked me to be part of the chaplain, see, for the police in Princeton. And I want to do that, and I might need a recommendation from the church. You don't know what situations are going to be brought in, but I want to do that. 
And I just remember the jail, honestly, I do. And it grieved my heart of the people that were in there. And you know what sometimes, and I, you just would grab a hold of somebody that did awful crime after awful crime, and he would be kind of rough with you, and you'd just grab that young man and, and kind of hug him and say, God loves you, and it made all the difference in the world. Let me pray. Father, us sharing Jesus, just his name with somebody else. We don't know where they're at and where you're working in their lives. Help us to do that through this church. And God, we want to see the mighty activity of you working amongst us. We know that the word of God and, and the gospel is the dudamos of God, the dynamite, that once they hear it, that it can explode into people's hearts unto faith. And God, just help us to not be ashamed of the gospel. And God, I remember times, there's times people said, don't say that here and don't say this here. And, but you do it anyway because we're to share the whole counsel of God and not have the fear of men. God, grow your church. Let the seeds of this, this message through the foolishness of preaching, let many come to faith in Christ. Use us to be your voice today in people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me ask you one more thing. Who do you know right now that's in heaven because they believe in Jesus. Who do you know right now that's in heaven because they believe in Jesus Christ? Let that encourage you to do even more for the Lord. Let's stand and sing the last one. Number 148.
Let me encourage you to invite someone to church next Sunday morning. God bless you. Thank you.